Volcanoes provide a spectacular and often deadly insight into the raw power of the Earth. It's starting to liven up. <laughs> it is. It go from both vents recently. 10% of the world's population, that's around 500 million people, live in and around active volcanoes. By 2050, that number could be as high as 1 billion. Despite recent advances in the Earth sciences, accurately predicting eruptions, especially in remote areas, remains a massive challenge. You physically couldn't walk around out there. It's too hot and too dangerous. Current monitoring techniques are based on measuring things like the earth tremors, the temperature changes and gas emissions around the volcano. While these can help us predict when a dangerous eruption might occur, they rely heavily on expensive technologies. In the shadow of Mount Pinatubo, towns and villages lie covered in a thick blanket of volcanic ash and mud. Unfortunately, a lot of communities living near volcanoes around the world cannot afford this kind of infrastructure, meaning that they have little warning of disasters, often with catastrophic outcomes. While volcano experts here argue about Pinatubo's future behavior, the people below continue to move out. On average, there are 35 major eruptions from the Earth's active volcanoes every year. We're over ground zero for the worst travel disruption the world has known since September the 11th. This is as close as we dare go to this huge plume. The cost of volcanic eruptions averages $100 million per year, and the human cost is even greater. Since 1980, 27 and a half thousand people have been killed by volcanoes. That's an average of 762 every year. It's not just the fact that the volcanoes are deadly. When dormant volcanoes suddenly become active, they can impact people's lives and futures forever. The deadliest eruption on this island for almost 400 years. Mount Sufria has come to life once again, spewing ash and rock more than five miles up into the Caribbean skies. The very future of Montserrat as an inhabited island is now in the balance. So, the financial and societal costs of not being able to reliably predict eruptions is colossal. But in the geoscience world, technology is moving fast. We now have the capability of mapping the ground in three dimensions at very high precision. And scientists from the University of Aberdeen and Oslo have been developing and testing new portable equipment that can be attached to drones, allowing us to gather very precise data in places that were previously too dangerous to go. I'm stood here in the safety of this ridge. I can command the drone, but I don't actually have to get any closer to the real danger area up there. These new technologies could hold the potential to revolutionize how we monitor volcanic hazards into the future and could make life safer for those living in the shadow of volcanoes around the world. We're on the island of Stromboli in the Aeolian Islands in the Mediterranean. It's a fairly active chain. I mean, Etna is one of the most active volcanoes on the planet, and Stromboli is actually quite famous. It's called the lighthouse of the Mediterranean because the Romans actually used to use the flashing eruptions from Stromboli to locate themselves at night in the sea. So it has a certain style of eruption. It erupts fairly regularly, and it's these small explosive eruptions most of the time, and they're actually called Strombolian eruptions. And every time we see an eruption, we get more data. It's, it's like the perfect laboratory having a volcano erupt because it gives you so much information to help you understand what might happen next time. So our mission, if you will, on Stromboli is to bring high precision 3D geology to the volcano. We're taking brand new 3D mapping kit, including thermal cameras, and we're gonna build a 3D thermal model of the volcano. Now this looks like an idyllic beach in the Mediterranean, which it is, but this beach lies in the shadow of Stromboli volcano. Now one of the hidden dangers from a volcano like Stromboli is that it causes material to collapse into the sea, which can result in a tsunami. 
Now on the 30th of December 2002, one such tsunami happened here on Stromboli. Millions of tons of rock fell dramatically into the sea, causing a big wave. That wave rippled round the island, crashed into all of these buildings along the shorefront here, washed boats up into the buildings and caused lots and lots of damage. Luckily, it was the 30th of December. Very few people were here, no tourists, and the beach was empty. Now since then, they've installed a tsunami warning system. There's a buoy out at sea that if it gets rocked by a big wave will send alarm signals to the observatory and then they can warn people on the island that a potential tsunami is imminent. In addition, they've put a bunch of signs around the island. You may only have a few seconds to get a few meters above the ground, but that could save your life. In order to monitor a volcano like Stromboli, it takes a lot of equipment. And here at the observatory, we have all of the kit that's monitoring the live volcano in real time. And up there on the volcano are a number of permanently stationed instruments that are recording the way the ground shakes. They're recording thermal images, real time images of the volcano. All of this infrastructure is put in place to try and help observe and warn people of any dangers of the volcano, but at the same time, it's inhibitively expensive and it takes a lot of man hours, not only to set up an observatory like this, but to walk all of the kit, the helicopter kit up to the side of the mountain to permanently mount stations around that. And that's how we monitor volcanoes in the present day. So if we can build on this fantastic infrastructure that's in place here and up on the volcano, and in addition, add monitoring remotely with drones, then we can really advance our understanding of how we monitor volcanoes and hopefully take that into areas where volcanoes are very poorly monitored, quick, cheap and effectively. A new way of monitoring volcanoes into the future. Because Stromboli is already heavily monitored, it provides a fantastic natural laboratory to carry out research on developing low-cost, more portable monitoring systems that might be applied to more remote parts of the world. Here we can compare our data gathered using these new methods against the existing tried and tested techniques. For this research, I'm teaming up with a group of experts in 3D mapping from the University of Aberdeen. They've been using drones to create 3D maps in other areas of geology and the earth sciences. Together, we have some very exciting ideas for applying this technology to help tackle the perennial problems of volcanic monitoring. So I'm flying the drone just out there across the lava field. And the reason we're doing this is we take multiple photographs every two to three seconds. And with all of those photographs, we're able to put them together and create a 3D model. So the drone is out there at the moment. It's gonna take five or 600 photographs during the course of this 20 minute flight. And then we'll combine all of those together into the 3D model. And that's the way that we're gonna map the surface of the volcano. And as we map that, um, we can come back again and again and again, and we can look for very, very subtle changes in that elevation. And those can be indications that uh, the volcano might be getting more active or there might be uh, some kind of catastrophic explosion imminent. So the obvious beauty of this is I'm stood here in the comparative safety of this ridge overlooking the volcano and the lava field, and I don't have to go any closer than this to what is clearly a very kind of active and erupting volcano. And it's not that long ago that what I'm doing here would have involved a team of scientists having to go out there on the lava flow, place out um, GPS receivers, place out seismometers, place out equipment. And now we can do the whole thing completely from the, the safety of a, of a ridge where we can overlook, I can command the drone, but I don't actually have to get any closer to the, to the real danger area up there. Hey guys, stop and look at this. This is a bomb, a volcanic bomb, a ballistic. Oh it my came word. Out of the volcano. Look at the size of it. And if you look, you can see Stromboli in the distance. I mean, that's a real indication of the potential hazard here. I think it was uh, 
April of uh, 2003, there was a big eruptive episode, what they call a pyroxysm, and th this bomb came from that. Apparently, there were lots of other bomb craters and so on. Ballistics got to within a few hundred meters of Stromboli. Wow. But on the other side, Genostra, the other village on the other side, an actual building was caved in by, wow. by a block. It's a, it's a good job it stopped here, because if it hadn't, if it had gone like, 50 feet further, it would have been straight down into the town, down the slope into the yep. town. Yep. We try to go up volcanoes like Stromboli when they're in a period of normal behaviour, because that's going to be potentially the safest time. But there's always the danger that it could have one of its more explosive eruptions. Prior to big eruptions, volcanoes can actually swell, the ground can move. It's very small movements and it's very difficult to detect with the eye. But if you can map the surface at very, very high precision, you can actually see some of those changes. And so we're able to potentially use 3D models and 3D movements with very, very high precision to actually monitor how the volcano is breathing in effect. Is it, is it taking a big gasp before it gives you a big eruption? In 2003, for example, this volcano shed a very big eruption. If we can start to map those out and get a feel for those changes and how the volcano gives us some precursors, then we can potentially warn the inhabitants of the island and if so be, they could be evacuated. From the summit of Stromboli, we're able to fly our drones right across the volcanic craters. We're using a variety of drones, and one of them is fitted with a thermal camera, which is designed to accurately capture the temperature of the ground. From that, we can see which bits are hot and which bits are cooler, and by incorporating those thermal images with our 3D mapping technology, we'll be able to get a much better understanding of the thermal structure of the volcano in three dimensions. That thermal structure can provide significant insight into changes within the volcano. If we see certain areas are unexpectedly hot, especially in areas where we're also seeing the ground swelling, then it might be an early warning sign. A major hazard of our research here is Stromboli's intermittent eruptions. They could potentially destroy the drone. Material ejected during these events can also skew our view of the surface temperatures, so it's all about timing making sure that we launch and fly our drone in between the eruptions. Okay, time to get started with the differential GPS. The really unique part of this work is merging the thermal images with the 3D model that we'll build from the regular pictures. We need to know the GPS location of the thermal pictures. So Sarah is using a differential GPS to take exact readings of several locations around the crater. Then, she's going to put a stake in the ground at each location and she's going to set those stakes alight, creating spots of heat that the thermal camera will be able to pick up and locate itself in three dimensions. So what we'll probably do is get, that, get it ready to go, wait for an explosion, and that's when the, the time clock's set. Once the explosion's gone, light the first one like the second one, like the third one, like the fourth one, we're ready to go. The thermal drone can go up, start thermal mapping, but it's got those positions, it knows where it is. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. These torches are soaked in gasoline, which burns at several hundred degrees centigrade. So that's plenty hot enough for us to be able to see them on the thermal pictures. Behind yeah, you. and there's one, there's a couple up here. Perfect. Right, let's go mapping. So yeah, 
right, there's the volcano there. Magical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flying a thermal camera over the volcano was amazing because you literally couldn't see anything through all the steam and the, and the smoke coming out. As soon as we looked on the thermal camera, we could see all the structure, we could see the crater, we could see the sides, we could see the center. It was amazing and, and I'm sure there are not very many people in the world who've ever got to, to fly a, a drone, let alone a thermal drone, across a volcano. <laughs> I've never done anything like that before, but I think it worked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are blocks raining out. This is what it's all about. The next morning, John and I were able to take a first look at our data and the 3D maps that were generated from the volcano. Okay, so they'll have a look at this. So this is the thermal image from the drone. Wow. So okay. what this is showing is you can see the basic structure and the shape of the volcano, but instead of normal photographs or a normal image, the colors in here are basically showing us what the temperature on the surface is. Mm. So the, the light, warm colors, the reds and the oranges and the whites, that means it's hot. And then the dark, cooler colors like the blues and the purples, that means it's mm. cold. So the white stuff's the hottest, where you can see in the middle of the vents there, it's yep. got these white. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So all those little spots there, those will be those hot blocks of lava that, that are dropping incredible. out of the sky, those bombs. That is absolutely incredible. I mean, it almost it looks to me as you've got more detail than you see from the normal uh, photographic images because you can't seem to see any of the steam or or, or the sort of fumarolic activity. You, know, you, you get to see behind that, don't you? But absolutely, and and this is this is the same reason that they use thermal imagery for search and rescue in burning buildings and things is that actually. The, the thermal image is actually looking through the steam and it's looking through all the dust and you're actually seeing the inside of the crater which if you looked at the regular photographs yeah, it's just a big cloud yeah yeah the other thing here is of course that uh, with this camera we actually have the radiometric data so it's not just an image for every pixel there is the temperature the real temperature value stored so you can actually go in and reprocess this image. So you can adjust the colors exactly, yeah. and then put a... There's only a limited range of color available. So you're losing the detail in there, but we can go back in and reprocess this data. If you were really interested in what was going on in the crater, and what we're working on developing at the moment is on the 3D model, you will be able to have a slider which will adjust the temperature range and adjust the light range. So you'll have all that information stored in the 3D model. To create these models, we've taken all the thermal images that we captured on the thermal drone and draped them over the top of the 3D model of the volcano. This allows us to see the thermal structure of the craters and vents in three dimensions. The real potential here in terms of volcanic monitoring is that we can repeat the process week after week and see changes developing over time. If we were to see one particular section of the volcano getting progressively hotter, especially in an area where we can also see that the ground is swelling, it might be an indication that something's developing at depth. For example, in 2011, lava flows unexpectedly erupted from the flanks of Stromboli away from the vents. Using our thermal monitoring technique, we could potentially see future events like this developing in the weeks prior to the eruption. This would allow local residents to be prepared well in advance for the potential hazards. Another advantage of using drones is that we can fit them with a range of portable monitoring equipment. We can attach sensors that monitor gases rising out of the volcano, another key indicator of an impending eruption, and we're also developing new methods to deploy portable seismometers right to the most dangerous areas. The key to all of these types of monitoring in the future will be to develop a technique to gather data on a regular basis, allowing us to see changes develop over time. 
I mean, in order to do that, I guess you'd want to program the drone to do exactly the same flight path. Is that possible? It, it is possible. Basically, how I would see it developing would be a team of experts would come out. They would fly a model of the volcano. Then you would use that to define that flight path. And then in the future, for all the subsequent runs, yeah, the flight path and everything would be programmed into the drone. Mm -hmm. The local person, they would just have to come along, press a button, the drone would go off, do its Collect thing, come down, yeah. land, download all the data, send it back to, to get it processed. I think, you know, in essence, that's the beauty of this, is that you could, you could then take that anywhere in the world. It's, it's cheap, it's portable, and ultimately you don't necessarily need to have an expert commanding it and getting it, getting it up, you know, getting it off, you know, probably experts to get it off the ground, but not necessarily once you're doing constant monitoring. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, there are, there are a lot of volcanoes and there are only two of us. So yes. ultimately, you know, to make this widely applicable and actually useful, it needs to be possible for somebody who isn't an expert to actually run it and, mm. and take care of it. The possibilities offered by new drone and 3D mapping technologies are changing and developing all the time, and we're right at the forefront of that. By coming out here and testing our ideas in the field, we can feed our experience back to the developers, who can in turn modify this new equipment to help meet our needs. We're still a long way from our ultimate goal of fully automated drone monitoring systems, but we have at least started to identify some of the key challenges that we're going to face in that project. And we've started to make inroads on building such a system. Being able to get these drones really close to the volcanoes means that, as well as getting high precision mapping and thermal imagery, we could also deploy portable seismometers and gas sensors to the areas we've never been able to get to before. Sending a low-cost portable drone kit anywhere in the world could really revolutionise how we monitor volcanoes, and it would be a game-changer for the people that live in their shadows. Ultimately, this technology could help us build a much better idea of how volcanoes behave, and in the future, it could save lives. <laughs>